Hey guys, I'm Nathan from Arms and Armor. And today I want to continue our kind of series of tests between weapons and armor. So this past weekend, I was at the Chivalric Fighting Arts Symposium uh, down in Kansas, an event that uh, Kansas City HEMA and uh, Bob Charette and Jess Finley and the other companions of the Seven Swords uh, put together as a big national gathering of people who do armored HEMA. And uh, there was a tournament, there were lessons, it was super awesome. And I, you know, I had my full kit on. And it really made me think about how our weapons might interact with that armor. So today I have our horseman's ax and I'm happy to announce that these now uh, will be produced in hardened carbon steel. Uh, previously, we've done them in a relatively mild uh, steel, but now we're doing slack quench, differential harden on the axe and the spike uh, in a new alloy, 4140 uh, carbon steel. It's a medium carbon steel, plenty hard for this kind of thing. Uh, I'm gonna use this on a few different pieces of metal. This guy. and this beat up, formerly really nice pauldron. Stay tuned. All right, so here I have a piece of 16 gauge steel that I've raised into a dome that is like the top of a helm or like a polen or a, a raised besague. So first I'm gonna try and hit this on the flat area, which will be both structurally weaker, right? Because it's just flat and materially weaker because this part has been work hardened a bit. We'll see what happens. All right, so on the flat part, we got a little bit of penetration there, right? The thing is fine. Uh, partially there is, I could feel when I hit this on this heavy bag, which I think is pretty similar to armor being on a person, that give uh, in there, soaked up some of the impact and prevented this spike from going straight through it. So I'm gonna try it a little harder and on the raised part. Huh. Interesting, all right? So see here, I hit it on the raised part and it skimmed off, uh, which is one of the things armor is supposed to do. Let's try it again. All right, that time I got a good hit, good bite. Uh, you can see that it penetrated somewhat, but not hugely, right? It definitely got a grip on there, uh, but didn't go straight through it. Now I have our poor sacrificial pauldron that we've used for some previous tests. This is hardened 1050 steel. Uh, it's a Really a beautiful piece of armor from our buddy Josh Davis at Davis Reproductions. Uh, some of you might not know, but Josh did his apprenticeship here. He worked here for about a decade. He's still real close friends with us at the shop. And this armor was pretty good, but it didn't quite meet his exacting standards uh, for articulation and fit. So he gave it to us to wreck. So I'm gonna try hitting this and see what happens. Not sure if you could see the sparks coming off of that. So what we see is some significant denting. Uh, both objects are hard, that's why there's a spark, but the ax skated off of the curved surfaces. Right now, I'm gonna try it with the articulation facing up as it would be on an armed man, right, if it was actually on his shoulder and we'll see what happens. Huh. 
So we still didn't get penetration. You can see these dents here. It did catch the articulation, but, and the edges bent of that articulation, right? But it really did protect whoever would have been wearing this. All right, so first things first, how'd the weapon hold up? It's fine, right? There is a little bit of dulling uh, at the point from being slammed repeatedly into hardened steel. Uh, but this actually holds up very well, uh, quite nicely. I didn't hit it with the ax end because honestly that ax is not going to go through armor. Axes don't do that, right? Things this ax would be good for, right, would be uh, essentially cutting to unarmored areas or unar unarmored people you met in contact. Uh, the edges are also essentially hooks, as is the spike. You can pull someone off a horse or get them off balance. You can push them, uh, spike them in the face, right? Uh, but this spike is really the primary part of the weapon for defeating armor. And so the weapon did great. Uh, what did we learn from this test? Well, even in a hard alloy with a super fine point, it's pretty hard to get through plate armor, right? I'm gonna do another test of this next week on mail, chain mail, and see how that goes. I suspect that this will be more effective uh, against mail than some of the other weapons we've tried based on its geometry and everything. Uh, when you hit plate armor, right, whether it's mild like this one or hardened, like that one, uh, unless it's real thin and flimsy, uh, you're just not gonna get lots of penetration through that plate, which makes sense, right? That's what armor is designed to do, right? You'll recall that when I hit these domed surfaces, the spike tended to skate off. And that's one of the ways that armor's designed, right? If you look at, you know, 14th century bassinets, or pauldrons or breastplates, they don't just armor you, they deflect, right? Armor is slippery and it's meant to move aside force. And it does that very effectively, right? That's why after failing to get through this plate, I, attached, I attacked the articulations, right? The way someone would be uh, wearing it and tried to see if I could get this to catch one of the lames and break them. And it did, in fact, bend the edges of the lames, but they held up. If I kept beating that thing with this, eventually I'd break the articulation, right? which is what we saw with the flail and a few other weapons. The weak spots on armor are the articulations. Right? It's the uh, riveting that holds them together. Now, this is always a trade-off, right? You need articulation or else you're just trapped in an Iron Maiden, right? You can't move. So you need to be able to move, but any place there's an articulation creates some potential weakness. Uh, and that is really the spot that you have to attack, right? Gaps in plate armor where there's mail, potentially, and articulations to break those articulations. So this spike, I think, was probably conceived to attack and break articulation points rather than to just go straight through armor. Now, it could definitely go straight through some armors, right? If you had an iron helm or an iron cap or an iron breastplate, right? Iron is quite a bit softer and more ductile uh, than this steel. I don't have a sheet of iron here, but I think it's more likely that this could actually go through it. And there were plenty of examples, especially earlier in the medieval period and for lower quality munitions armors in which those armors were iron, right? So they would have been susceptible to something like this, which is an elite weapon, right? Look at this thing, it's super Gothic. It's pretty rad. Uh, this would have been an elite knight's weapon. 
and it's not exactly just a can opener toward other elite knights, right? Instead, it's something that you can use to systematically break down their defenses, break their articulations. Then when their articulations are broken, right, you start to get exposed areas uh, where you can actually attack them. This would also concuss the heck out of someone uh, if you hit them in the head uh, when they're wearing a helm, even if it didn't go through. And this sharp point, since it, you're often getting a quarter inch, half an inch of penetration in some of these areas, that helps to transfer that force really aggressively through the armor into the body. So even if it doesn't stab them to death, right, you're getting that purchase on the slippery surface of the armor and transferring that force. And so yet another cool investigation of armor. We'll keep it up. Thanks for watching. Bye.